Hello. Today I'd like to talk to you about a number of study habits that might seem effective but are actually pretty inefficient and they're probably things that you want to avoid because there are better things that you could be doing. These relate uh, first and foremost to learning vocabulary, to using dictionaries, and then to sort of longer term study plans, planning out your time and how you're going to use it. Um, if you're new to my channel, I make videos for a long-standing audience of people who um, I have a condition that I call polyitis, uh, sort of tongue in cheek, but poly from polyglot, people who want to be polyglots, people who like learning languages, who want to learn lots of languages. So this third portion is really just for them. Um, also, people come to my videos. I'm happy to help anybody who wants to, to learn a language more effectively. Um, and so uh, the first two portions are for everybody, in, in particular also for what I call normal language learners. Um, that is, you're somebody who... Um, life tells you yeah, it would be good, it would be um, you need or you should learn this language at this point and maybe you're not particularly excited about that as such but since you have to do it you want to do it right, you want to do it well and you want to know how you should go about it. So uh, I'm happy to help with that as well. So as always I'll put timestamps for these uh, three sections. So let's get to it. The first thing that people can spend a lot of time and energy studying um, and unfortunately not really get very much out of it is in learning vocabulary. So one of the tried and true ways of, of people learning vocabulary is using flashcards. You can get a set like this. This is for Chinese. You've got a thousand flashcards. Um, you have, uh, you can put dividers in here between the sections like I have. So I've got dividers about every 20 words. So what you do is you take a set of these flashcards and they have the Chinese word on the front with some usages of it. And on the back, they have the English translation. So you take about 20 of these and throughout the course of your day, you go through it and you say chi and foot, chi, foot, chi, foot, and you try to memorize it that way, and you um, take this pack of 20, you go over it several times a day, <clears throat> and you try to memorize it. And then uh, the next day, you put it in a different stack, and you use what's called spaced repetition. You take that deck that you went through, and if you remember it, you put it back for a different day, different time of repetition. If you've forgotten it, you might do it again. You take a pack that you did before, and so you uh, eventually space out the number of repetitions you do so you're not doing the same thing every day. And at the end, you will have memorized these thousand words. This is obviously old school paper. Um, this whole process has obviously been put on uh, digital form um, most Commonly, most famously, there's a program called Anki that does the whole space repetition uh, program automatically. It remembers, the program remembers when you last did it, when you forgot it, and so it spaces it out supposedly um, more efficiently. Um, and so you don't have to be conscious of, of when you're putting the word, it will do the word for you. But the procedure is exactly the same. You get a list of flashcards and you memorize them. <clears throat> So people can spend a lot of time. This can be their study time for the day is memorizing a list of vocabulary words. And at the end, like I said, if you do that, whether by Anki or this, you'll have memorized this list of a thousand words. And that's about it. Uh, that doesn't really help you when you're learning the language. If you learn words in outside of context, it's very hard to plug them into context. You, you might recognize them, but in terms of actively recalling and plugging it in, um, it's, it's just a, a holdover. I think the whole concept of, of learning words, vocabulary lists is from, from school learning. Um, and the purpose of doing it in school learning is not for the actual learning process, but for the classroom management. I'm a teacher. I've got a large class. I have to give a test. Vocabulary tests are pretty easy to, to grade and measure. And that goes into standardized testing as well. So now you have to take a standardized test. So you better memorize these words. So um, memorizing word lists um, is uh, is good for memorizing word lists, but uh, it doesn't really help you uh, when you're learning the language. And in the same time that you could spend memorizing these thousand words, if you were to use the procedure that I 
used in the videos that I made not long ago on, on studying for 15 minutes a day, um, you would be learning the words in a dialogue, in a sentence. So you'd be learning the whole structure of the language as well, and you'd be learning the words in context, and that's a much more efficient use of your time. So um, this whole concept of memorizing vocabulary, I think, doesn't have any real role in, in self-learning of languages. It's just not the whole over from school, and you really, it's, there's no need to do it. Um, I learned a new word recently, uh, OG, particularly YouTube OG. I'm a YouTube OG. I've been making um, films since the beginning. I'm an original gangster. And so if you've been making films for 15 years that have been seen hundreds of thousands of times and have got thousands of comments and you take a break from YouTube like I did and you come back and you look at the comments, you know, gosh, pretty much every video that I make has somebody popping up and saying, what do you think of Anki for memorizing vocabulary? And the same thing happens when I give a conference presentation. Somebody will pop up and say, hey, what do you think of Anki for studying vocabulary? And this person does always seem kind of like a, a, a big friendly eager dog jumping up and, and sort of wanting to play, wanting wanting my approval for the whole procedure. Not so much really wanting to know what I think, but wanting me to say, please, please approve. Please tell me this is a good thing to do. <sighs> I'm sorry, big friendly dog. I'm a cat person. It's not a good thing to do. There's, there's no need to memorize vocabulary in this fashion. And if you spend your study time doing that, you're just memorizing lists and you might have a list memorized, but that's not really gonna help you get um, better in, in the language. There are much better and more efficient ways to do it. Like I said, learning dialogues. <clears throat> uh, I have a prop now. Let's move on to the second uh, sort of school holdover, I think. Uh, inefficient way of studying that might seem very efficient. When you're doing this, it, it really feels like you're working hard. Um, I prepared this prop of a page of a text and I went through it and I wrote under every word that is not immediately um, visibly the same in English and in Spanish. I went and emulated using a dictionary so that I looked up every single word and wrote it down on this piece of paper. And so when I was in college studying Latin and Greek and Sanskrit and things like that, this, this is what my pages looked like. This is my homework and my assignment looked like. And um, I, for the longest time, I thought that's how you um, had to go through a, a text, you know, really assiduously looking up every word with a dictionary. Um, and so there was a time in my life if I saw a text like this, I would think, Wow, that's that's the text of a good student. That's the text of a good, hardworking student. Probably going to get an A in the class and probably learning a lot with it. Um, now I look at this, and I somebody I see somebody doing this, and I said, well, what if this is your doctoral dissertation and you are translating a text that nobody else has has ever translated? Um, then this might be what you need to do, but. If you're just Joe or Jane language learner reading a, learning a, a, a commonly studied language and uh, reading a text that's been translated and is available um, in, in both audio and textual form, um, there are so many more pleasant and, and effective ways of, of doing this that really now when I look at this, I see somebody's in way over their head. If you need to do this, this text is much too hard for you. And if you are doing this, this is kind of, I don't know, kind of akin to trying to dig a big hole in the ground. Instead of using a shovel, you're using a, a teaspoon. Um, this is just not efficient. Um, you can do something very similar to the techniques, again, that I show in this, in this 15 minute videos, um, while using audiobooks and using translations. If you take a text like this and you, you read it in English first, so you know exactly what it's saying, and you listen to it, and then you come back and you read it aloud one time, uh, and then you read it um, again, uh, and you want to read it for comprehension, at that point, you should have a pretty good idea what it's saying. And you might want to use a dictionary and look up um, two or three key words, probably verbs that tell you what's going on. Um, a lot of the adjectives you can look at and you say, I'm not sure what it says, but that's be nice to know everything, but that's more for flavor. But, you know, some, some of the action words, something like this. But um, to make a text look like this by using a dictionary too much is another way. Again, this would take you hours. You'd be working hard at it. But in terms of how much you actually get out of learning the language, 
uh, if you were to do the things I just said, use the, uh, you make avail yourselves of bilingual texts of audio versions and textual versions and comparing and contrasting and then just looking up key words after you've read it aloud and gotten a feel for it. Um, that would be much more efficient than doing this. So again, this is something that somebody might do in school. Um, a good student would do it, a good, who's going to get a good grade. But if you're teaching yourself a language, um, this is something where you spend hours doing this and you could use those hours doing something um, more, more productive, more efficient. So that's all I have to say today. I'm trying to keep it short for um, normal people, normal language learners. Maybe you're not normal in the rest of your life, but again, if you're just learning a language because, well, seems like it would be a good thing to you to do at this point stage in your life and you just want to do it effectively. I hope these two points help you uh, learn, learn vocabulary in context, in dialogues, not by memorizing lists, and don't rely over much on a dictionary if there are bilingual texts and other things available to, to help you make sense of a, a commonly known text. So uh, regular people, um, normal people, um, you can leave now and you should only stay and keep watching if you're, if you're still out there watching. If you are, um, if you've self-identified as having polyitis, if you um, would like to learn lots of languages. So um, if you have polyitis, uh, I don't have a prop, but I have, um, let's play a, um, let's do a thought experiment. Let's. Let's imagine that um, you really lucked in um, the equivalent of, of, of winning the lottery. This would be a dream situation for uh, many people who want to become polyglots. You have something, um, maybe um, Asimil, in conjunction with a major university, has financed uh, a study um, and they want to see uh, how much, how well you can learn. Um, so for the next three years, um, they're going to provide you with all the materials that you need, um, and they will they'll actually pay you to study all day, every day. So um, you're being paid to learn, you're being given circumstances, you're being freed from other uh, responsibilities and things that you have to do, and the goal is to see how much you can learn, uh, how many languages you can learn well in over a course of a three-year period. Um, so you might look at a situation like this and say, okay, well, gosh, if I have no other responsibilities and I can study all day, every day, and this is something I want to do, and I'm excited and passionate about this, um, let's see, you know, can I possibly feasibly study for um, 12 hours a day? I say I need to sleep for eight hours and uh, other things and, and 12 clock hours by the stopwatch, you know, it actually takes maybe like 14 hours or so because you've got to shift and change and go in between. So it uses that and I need to factor in some time for going to the bathroom or going for a run or eating or other things. I guess I could still be listening to stuff, but no, maybe not. Yes, yeah, let's, let's, let's to make things nice round numbers. Let's say, okay, if I'm going to study for 12 hours a day and I have no other responsibilities, um, gosh, for back to those 15 minute, um, videos and using Asimil methods. If I spend 15 minutes a, a day with that guy, I could, that's, I could learn 48 languages in a year. If we define learning as going through an Asimil manual and internalizing it and, and getting the foundation. And so you might set out to do that. You might get really excited and be curious about everything. Say, I want to learn all the languages in this family. I want to learn all different types of languages. I'm going to learn different things. And so um, over the course of your three, you've got three years to do this. Over the course of your first year, um, you might go and, and, and go through 48 different manuals and get an overview, get an introduction, um, get your grounding in, in 48 different languages. Um, but then you come to your second year and you say, okay, um, I've gone through the introduction manuals and let's just imagine since it's a thought experiment anyway, that there is an intermediate left manual for all of the languages. There really isn't, or you could have some other materials, but you'd find, well, wait, wait a minute. Um, to go from that point zero of, of knowing absolutely nothing to being an advanced beginner, going through a manual, seeing lots of dialogues, internalizing them, um, getting an overview of the grammar, some basic vocabulary internalized in context, 
yeah, I could do that by systematically working for, for 15, min 15 minutes a day, each and every single day. But now I've gone from point zero to that point A, and now I want to go from point A to point B. And point B is saying, well, um, I don't just want to have an overview of the grammar. I really want to understand it and internalize it. And I don't just want to um, have some of the basic vocabulary. I want to have some more sophisticated vocabulary. And I want to basically just have an overall better grasp and understanding of the language. And so um, you're going to find that 15 minutes a day is, is not enough to go from point A to point B. You need 30 minutes. So you still have 12 hours, but now you have 30 minutes. And so instead of 48 languages, you can only study 24 to take them up to the next level. So you're going to have to pause, abort, put aside half of the languages that you studied. And so you do that and you go and you learn and you get more sophisticated, you get a better grounding, you um, have a deeper understanding and, and things are, are you're, you're making progress, you're getting better. Um, and then again, which is rounding things off very nicely and easily at the end of that second year, um, you're ready to take it up another notch and go and you look and you say, okay, now I'm at point B. I've got a mature, sophisticated understanding. I've got some more advanced vocabulary, but now from point B to point C, I want to uh, get even more advanced. I want to learn some, read some literature. I want to do some other things. I want to take this up to a more sophisticated, more advanced level. And in order to do that, um, I need not half an hour a day. I, I need an hour a day for each language. So you had 24 languages that you're doing half an hour a day, and now you've got 12 languages that you can only do for an hour a day. So you've got to take another 12 and put them aside, abort them, um, put them into storage, do something like this. Um, and so at the end of three years, you will have had, you will have about a dozen languages that you have taken to a fairly sophisticated level, um, but you will also have spent a lot of time on languages that you ended up aborting. Um, and that's very much my experience. Um, I wasn't lucky enough to win that lottery or, or have things, but I did have a, a time period when I was able to um, study pretty much all day, every day, and was able to explore lots of things. And I don't know that that's a waste of time in the same way that I do think memorizing vocabulary lists or or spending too much time looking things up in a dictionary is, in essence, you're studying hard, but you're not really getting anything from it. Um, if you study hard and then abort languages, um, unless they're in one year and out the other, you forget everything, that's a waste. But um, if, you, if you're happy learning languages, if you enjoy the process, if you like the, the breadth of understanding, if you remember things, if you say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know, maybe I can revisit them. Um, if you've got this real obsession, you can develop a, a maintenance scheme and go back and replay them and all this kind of thing. But um, still, when all is said and done, um, if I look back on, on my career in terms of ways that I've wasted, um, I won't say wasted time, but um, I, I learned very on that memorizing vocabulary was not um, a good use of my time. I learned very on that um, learned very early on that using dictionaries too much was not a good use of my time, but um, I did spend a lot of time using learning languages that I have subsequently aborted. I've spent thousands of hours learning, well, Chinese and, and Japanese and Turkish and Swahili, and I'm just never going to be able to go back to them. And more than I regret uh, saying, well, I wasted time doing it, um, I just feel sad when you abort, I think anybody who has an abortion is going to feel miserable about that afterwards. Uh, when you amputate something and you, you work on it and you can't go back to it, that's um, that's a sort of sad feeling. And then I also do feel that um, yes, uh, I would, um, I'd like to be even. I'm 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 pretty advanced now in, in Arabic, but. Um, stands to logic and reason that if I hadn't spent all that time on Chinese and Japanese and Turkish and Swahili, I could probably be even more advanced now um, in Arabic, and, and that would be a nice thing. So I guess my message for this third thing that you might want to um, avoid for studying ineffectively is not 
being cognizant of the, the, the learning curve, the fact that um, the more advanced you get, um, the more time you need to put into learning languages and just sort of keeping that in the, being more aware of that when you set out to start exploring, um, you could probably ultimately end up learning more efficiently over the course of your career. So um, that is my message for today. I hope this was useful and interesting to you, and uh, I will talk to you again next week. Thank you for listening.